This is a meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, March 28th, 2024. The, uh, the first hearing on the docket is a 246 River Drive public hearing as a request for a finding or uh, under 5.1.7 uh, and or variance under 6.2 of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw. Anthony J. Pipchinski, property located at 246 River, River Drive, parcel ID 06B0027. 0000. zero, zero, zero. <clears throat> it's a limited business zone. The applicant is pro, uh, requesting, proposing, constructing a garage to be attached to the current uh, pre existing non conforming structure and seeking relief from the rear setback on the property. Anybody here to speak to that uh, one? I, I, I'm, I'm Anthony. Okay. You want to come, come on up here to uh, sit at the table? Sure. I thought this was for the important people. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> it's not a real part. All right, uh, why don't you tell, us what, tell us what you're trying to do. Uh, there's an existing garage at that, at that uh, house now. It's a, just the one car garage. I just want to put another bay next to it, uh, blend it in with the, with the original bay. It's going gonna, it's gonna to just be the same dimension. That current garage is 20 feet long. This would be 20 feet long also and 14 feet wide. And it would, uh, it would, it would, uh, it would have the same roof structure as, as is currently there which is just peeked out over it. And it would just be adding another bay to what's there and make it look similar or make it look like it belongs with the house and, uh, um, and just add another bay to the garage. There's enough land room on the sides. It's just the back. I was a couple of feet short to, to the Okay. To the how, uh, how close to the side are, we, how are you? I have an extra 20 feet to the side. <clears throat> Uh, 21, I have an extra 21.1 feet to the side. That's as it stands now? No, that would be with the, that would be with the 14. Okay. So, so it's, right now there's 14 plus 21, so that's 35 feet from the existing garage to the side. And so it's the rear property line that is close? It's the rear property line that, that's close, yeah. That's closer, yeah. Would the new addition be encroaching any further upon that as, than, as the existing structure? No. It's no. going to be it's going to be the same. So this is the existing mm -hmm. uh, this is the existing garage mm -hmm. that's there right here. This one here. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. The, the existing garage is here, here, and I just want to add this one right right next to it. Okay. So it would be the same dimension as the one that's currently there. Right. Go from that. So the issue. Um, <clears throat> For the board here mm -hmm. is uh, this is a side setback but then the way the property shaped how it's shaped oddly like this mm -hmm. um, this is considered a rear setback so you see how far he's, he's going to be 38 34 uh, kind of it's kind of a complicated geometry question of where you're supposed to measure from yeah but if you, if you um, measure straight back you know to the lines right but then it's then pretty yeah. close but so it's a 40 foot setback in the back from a back lot it's only 15 feet off the side it's a, the property is a weird shape, so he has like kind of two back lines instead of because if you were looking at this, you would think of that as the side, but it's right. really the back because of the, the way it jogs in there. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I my my <clears throat> my opinion on it, and the building inspector and I differ on this. Sometimes this is pre-existing, non-conforming to the back line here. All of these are under 40 feet. And this new this new thing is going to be 20 feet, so it's under, or no, it's going to be 34.1. So I think this is an extension of a pre-existing non-conforming use. Um, we're we're still getting some guidance from town council on that, but so I just put and or on there to, to Tommy. Want, Tommy views it as a variance, so I think we should consider it as a variance because he's the one who has to give the building permit. Um, but uh, so it's a question of yeah. So it's so you can see here it's. The closest here is going to be 34.1 feet instead of 40. Right. But you see other parts of the house right. are already closer to that line, including this part of the house is only 24 feet from the back line there. So it's actually farther away from the back line than the existing part of the house. Mm -hmm. See the virus? Yeah, I have a little less smaller version, but <laughs> not as good. Okay, well. Mm -hmm. So I, guess, I think you could view it either way. You could view it as a as a finding or a variance. 
Um, I think in this case, the, the variance could be appropriate too because it is an oddly shaped lot, mm -hmm. which is one of the characteristics we can take into account for a variance is that uh, it's, it's close to that back lot because of the, it's got two back setbacks. Um, I, I think it's in, it's in harmony with like the overall layout of the property. And I don't think it actually is really creating any new like nonconformity there. And, um, it's gonna be farther away from the back line than the house currently is. It's just going. Yeah, I would, I would agree that being as the house from any way you measure it on the back side is nonconforming and you won't be encroaching upon the side setback um, outside of the limits and staying within the line of the house. I don't see um, it being an issue. Um, I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, just look at here. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it would be an issue. So, are we are we moving for a finding? Uh, we're t like I said, we're gonna we're gonna get some guidance from town council on it, but I think. Tommy's feeling is that it's a that it's a variance issue. He Tom, Tommy's the one who has to give the building permit, so we could do a finding. And Tommy says it's not enough, then he's not going to grant the permit. So I think we should view it as a variance. I think we should consider it that it's a an oddly shaped. You know, the, the grounds for a variance are um, circumstances related to soil conditions, shape, or topo topography of such land or circumstances or structures, and especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district. Um, I think this is an oddly shaped lot. It's a it's a it's a pre-existing house that's on an oddly shaped lot, um, and uh, it's not really encroaching any farther any closer than the house currently is. So I think we can view it as a variance that way. Um, With the addition of the garage onto the house, what would be the way that those distances were measured off of the corner to the line there? The way Randy has it surveyed. Yeah. What would be what would be the new measurement from that back job there? Thirty-four. Thirty-four was it? Thirty-four point one. Okay, and you're 24, 33, 34, 38. Okay. Oh, okay, 34.1. So the new addition, the new corner would be 34. Right. Off of that back line. Where is this? So this is the existing house here. Yeah. This is the new addition here. Oh, okay. So the way that these are measured off of that back jog. Okay. So you have 24, 33, 34, 38.3, and the new one would be 34.1. Okay. So, I mean, you're still within, you know, the average of where these are across the board. Right. So do you want to... May I address the board? Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 the, there was a conversation that took place with the neighbor, the Clements next door, and they have, they have no issue with this. This is my brother, Joe, by the way. I'm going to ask the board's names. I, I just. Oh. oh, Andrew Bombardier. Oh. Jason. You're Andrew. Jason Galvin. I know you. I know you. <laughs> Iris. Iris. I've been living in this town for 30 years. <laughs> I've only known Andrew through emails. Well, I know Andrew too. <clears throat> okay, so you want to do want to entertain a motion? I did, um, so my question is, I mean, if... Yeah, so we'll, uh, I'll do them. We'll move for a variance under 6.2 uh, of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw uh, for, the, for the property uh, that we can... Um, with a finding that the uh, particular use is due owe to the, owing to the circumstances related to soil conditions, shape, topography um, of of such land or structures and especially affecting such land and structures but not affecting generally the zoning district and uh, that he t to seek to give relief from the uh, rear setback of 34.1 feet from the 40 feet. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay, so it's approved. Approved. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I, else at this point? No, so uh, I, I have to write up the decision, uh, um, and then I'll file it with the with the town clerk, and then there's 20 day appeal period um, where I guess technically you can move forward, but it's at your own uh, at your own risk in case anybody were to appeal it. I 
Okay, so they have to 20 days it. to appeal. 20 days after it's filed with the clerk. Okay. So, um, yeah. what, is, are you on a particular timeline for this? No, no, okay. no. So, um, I'd like to get it before winter. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll get it filed probably next week. Okay. All right, good. So then it'll be 20 days, roughly 30 days yeah. you know, from now is from now, yeah. when we're good to go. Unless we hear all of it. Unless somebody appeals it. Right. Yeah. If somebody appeals it, I'm sure you'll come. Yeah, them. yeah. Right. Okay. Thank okay. You. Nice seeing you. Nice Thank seeing you very much. Right. Yep. All right, moving right along. The uh, next hearing, which is scheduled for 715, is a public hearing related to 93 Cemetery Road. A request for a variance from the minimum lot size requirements under section 4.1 of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw. Uh, applicant Mark Britton, property as I said located at 93 Cemetery Road Assessors, Map 1, Lot 7A. It's an agricultural residential zone and the applicant is seeking a variance from the minimum lot size for use of seasonal campers. Thank you. Hi, Mark Esposito from Mr. Britton. Mr. Britton. Is the camping on the riverside? Yes. Oh. Mr. Esposito, you want to tell us what's going on? Yes, thank, thank you, sir. Um, so as, um, there's a certain amount of backstory here, which probably people are familiar with, um, that uh, Mr. Britton previously had um, applied for um, variances from the um, setback requirements um, relating to the campers. Um, that variance was um, denied and um, there has been a pending case in uh, land court uh, for the past couple of years. Um, and there is um, an agreement um, between Mr. Britton and the, the I guess all of the town uh, defendants and decision makers um, that uh, in future um, he would respect all of the um, side setback and uh, not side front all of the rear whatever setback applies um, and um, the issue uh, with the lot is that it is um, 28,000 and change uh, square feet and uh, in the agricultural residential district um, the Lot size should be 30,000, um, so um, this is a little less than 94% um, of the uh, proper size. Um, if the variance were not granted, um, the uh, property essentially um, becomes uh, unusable. Um, it would not involve um, any intensification of use um, or anything um, different. Uh, the property has been used for many years. Um, for seasonal um, RV use, um, and this would be uh, consistent um, with that many year history. Um, and uh, again, this uh, variance request is only for um, lot size, and um, Mr. Britton would still be bound by um, both the provisions of the settlement agreement <coughs> and then everything else generally applicable in the zoning bylaw. How, how long has the property been used for camping? I've owned the property since 2013, but it goes back further than that. Was it, was it used for that before that? Yes, it was. Um, I've seen photographs that I believe date from the early 90s um, of a trailer on, on the property. And spoken with um, people associated with predecessors of Mr. Britton who suggest that, that it was not a, a new use in 2013. Um, there's also one um, uh, on the, uh, the plan that was prepared in 2013 when this parcel was created, it does show that there was already um, a trailer on, on that plan. Right now it just at the end. 
I'm sorry? I, I saw like a two structure here. Apparently that's not a house, right? There, so there's no, um, there's no um, home on the site. There are uh, movable campers. There is um, a, a shed and a gazebo um, oh, okay. and, a, and a utility shed. Um, okay. But there, there's no other structures. Um, and if this variance were granted, it would not give Mr. Pritchett the right to erect any new structures on the property. So I, I would just just add, uh, which Mr. Esposito was kind of said here, is that, um, which we're aware of, so this is part of a, a, the settlement agreement with the selectmen. Uh, if we if we were to turn this variance down, it would, it would the lawsuit would be reinstituted, the lawsuit's costing the town money. The selectmen have signed the settlement agreement. They don't have any authority to tell us what to do, but they they are in broad, broad support of this variance mm -hmm. uh, as, as a means to, uh, stop the and and the lawsuit that they've been dealing with um i i don't i don't have any problem with this this um i think qualifies under a variance outside of what's going on with the selectmen um with the lawsuit it's uh like 94 to 98 percent of the size it needs to be it's been used that way historically you know without any issues um it is um again so it's an undersized lot next to the river, which is um, not not the average type of lot in the district. So it qualifies in that way as a um, unique piece of property, size-wise, location-wise, shape-wise. Uh, it's at the end of a dead end road next to next to all um, resident um, cornfields and like farming uses. Uh, so I think it, even outside of the Selectman's wishes. I, I think it qualifies, in my opinion, for a variance. For the variance that's being asked for here. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. I'm familiar with the case from a couple years ago, and I don't think anything much has changed. Um, yeah, I agree with everything you said. Yeah, I I agree with you. Just sort of looking from the map, it looks yeah. I, I didn't see the other spot. But uh, just looking from the map, mm -hmm. it looks like uh, I agree. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty isolated. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'll make a motion to grant a variance from the minimum lot size requirements under Section 4.1 of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw by Mr. Mark Britton at 93 Cemetery Road, Assessor's Map, 1 Lot 7A, Agra uh, Residential Zone, um, for the use of seasonal campers. I'll second that. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Iris. Thank you very much. Thank you. Russell Street Public Hearing request for a finding under Section 5.1.7 of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw and a variance from Sections 7.4.7.1 and 7.6.3.2 of the Hadley Zoning Bylaw uh, by Belize SLS LLC, property located at 315 Russell Street, Assessors Map 10A, Lot 25. It's an industrial zone. Applicant seeks a finding on extension slash alteration of pre existing non conforming uh, side and rear setback and variances from. Uh, the sign requirements to allow for uh, 148.29 square feet of uh, building mounted signage and internally lit sign on the property. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Tom Reedy. I'm an attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of Belize SLS, um, who's going to be the operator of this site. I've got some plans here. I have submitted these, but it probably makes sense for you to look at them and I can kind of run through it. Uh, so as the chairman noted, there's uh, 
three sets of relief that we're asking for. The first is a finding. And so if you look at the first sheet that you have, the top um, picture is an aerial image of what exists there today. And if you look towards the top of that top picture, you'll see the yellow depicts the property line, and then you'll see the proximity of the building, that property line. And so particularly, it's the northerly section of it, right? So if I have a point, it's over here is what we're talking about. Right in this area, that uh, building is only 15 feet from the side lot line and that rear lot line. 40 feet is what's required in the industrial zoning district uh, for both side and rear lot. So it's a pre-existing non-conforming use. And then if you look at the um, plan in the uh, image below, you'll see what the proposed conditions would be. And the uh, yellow line still is the property line and then the uh, off light uh, is the building. And you'll see here, they've pulled the building away from the property line, but to allow really for the service entrance here, they're still, they're 20 feet away. So they're going from 15 feet side yard setback to 20 feet side yard setback. So they're not getting to the 40 feet but they're certainly making it better and they're completely compliant with the rear yard. And so just if we're talking about, well, what's the amount of land, uh, what's the amount of building area that violates in the existing conditions, it's about 6,500 square feet, 6,584 square feet. That's within that area where the building shouldn't be. And in the proposed conditions, it's only 1,953 square feet. So, you know, we're improving it by over two thirds. And so our suggestion that the board could make is a finding that such uh, a change is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing nonconformity. Um, and so again, industrial zoning district, if you're familiar with the site, it's been what it's been for quite a long time. And I think this is some pretty good and meaningful redevelopment. So th that's the finding request. And then as the chairman noted, we're asking for variances from sign requirements and it's twofold. The first is as to uh, size, wall area, essentially for the, for the wall signs. And so you know, one of the things to pay attention to is the location, and this is a good image still, the proximity of the building to where the front property line is and where the traveled way is. I think that's only 63 feet from that property line. Where the proposed building is, it's, it's set back uh, 177 feet, which is essentially 191 feet from the traveled way. So in this zoning district, 64 square feet is allowed for wall signs. We are asking for 148.29 feet. And I want to draw your attention to besides the distance from the traveled way and to suggest to you that as a result of the shape and topography of this lot, um, you know, this relief could be granted because it's going to be Public safety is really the concern to make sure that folks know uh, what is here. But this is also the aggregation of three different lots, right? So it's 315, and I can show you here. So it's 315, which is the Steve Lewis Subaru. It's 305, which is that former Rayos building. You know, back in the day, it's not there anymore. Still has a sign. And then 303 rear, which was going to be the new Rayos building, but uh, that didn't happen. And so now that's also part of this um, uh, plan. And so, as I was thinking about it, there could have been a 64 square foot sign here, um, but there's not. And there's an additional, I think it's uh, 16 square feet of a freestanding sign here that could have been attributed to this, but it's not. So right there, that's 80 square feet of signage that could have existed that is not going to exist. And then when you look at the sign that exists here, which is going to be taken down, I think that's 74 square feet. Um, and then this freestanding sign, which I'll talk about in a moment, it's only about 50 square feet and you're allowed 64, so it's 14 square feet shy of that. And so when you total up what could have existed as signage, uh, you're at 168 square feet. And so what we're asking for, and that's not even including the 64 that's allowed. If you add the 64 that is allowed, you're at 232 square feet. So what we're asking for is 148.29 square feet. And I've got... Tom, if I may, yeah, on, the, on the proposed drawings, there's yes. a white rectangle near the entrance. Is that a standing sign there at the entrance as well? Yes, correct. Yeah, that's, that's the freestanding sign. That can be 64, 64 square feet. What we're looking for there is 
to keep the existing sign. We would be relocating it. So right now it's closer to um, the roadway than it would be, but it's it's internally illuminated. It is, it's grandfathered. We would just be looking to keep that same sign, but move it back. And so that's the 50 square feet. Um, and so the, the last uh, page of your packet will show what we're talking about for signage and it's it's the Subaru emblem. And remember, this is set back, you know, over 175 feet. It's the Subaru emblem. It's the Subaru language. It's the word Belize, and it's the word uh, service, right? So that's what we're looking to put on the front of that building. That's that's set back, and all of that will total that 148 uh, square feet and some change. And of those, <coughs> service, Subaru, and Belize will be inter internally illuminated. That is the request. That's the second variance, so. though. Yes, that's so that's the other piece. Right. That's the request. And so the uh, freestanding sign is internally illuminated. We'd ask that that be continued. It, it probably, and I haven't talked to the building commissioner yet, but it probably could just continue as a pre existing non conforming sign. If you grant the variance for, for that piece of it, you know, that clears up anything. Uh, for that to be internally illuminated, but the balance of the request is yes for internal illumination from uh, for those other signs. So what you've got finding uh, for the relocation of the building, not substantially more detrimental, uh, size of those wall signs, and then internal illumination. Those are the three requests that we have for you. Um, we should probably know this, but the square footage is different for the wall signs then the, the, the public comment. Yeah, please. <laughs> Hello, I am Bill Dwyer from the Planning Board. Uh, first, I want to note that the Planning Board unanimously opposes any signage variances on this property. Uh, the Allowed signage on a new structure in the industrial district is 64 square feet, period. Attorney Reedy makes an eloquent argument about the uh, property having a higher signage quota, but in fact, this is a single parcel, it's been merged. The other structures have no signs on them, not a question of taking an existing sign and repurposing it. There is no structure in front. Uh, the former rouse has been demolished. There is no signage on the structure in the rear. And there is not a single grounds for granting a variance. Um, there is nothing unique to this property, unlike other properties in the district. There is no hardship. Um, financial or otherwise, and there is no way to allow t more than twice the uh, approved, the allowed signage without substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the zoning bylaw. We adopted a new sign bylaw, I'm going to say about 15 years ago. Uh, primarily to rein in the size of the signage that has been an issue. As far as the illuminated uh, signage on the building, that's a no-go. Uh, illuminated signs, internally illuminated signs are not permitted by the zoning bylaw. As far as the uh, highway sign goes, if they want to reface what is there, they can. That does not require a variance. If they take it down and want to put up something new, they're starting from scratch and they should not have internal illumination. They can light it from the ground, they can illuminate it, they just can't have internal illumination. That was the will of town meeting and uh, that's where we want to uh, draw the line. We don't need more signage. Subaru doesn't need more signage. They may want more signage. They don't need it. And there is no hardship in denying the variance. Did I say the planning board unanimously voted? Yes, we unanimously voted. Duly noted. Five, five to nothing. Okay. 
uh, I'd request a continuation, if it's okay, with the board, maybe to the board's next meeting so that maybe we can have a conversation with the planning board before there's a denial. And we're prohibited from bringing this back for a certain period of time. Sure. We're in front of them on Tuesday, so we'll have an opportunity to have that conversation sooner than later. Um, we have no objection to the finding. Yeah. Um, are these separate applications? Are we able to? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think you got two. Yes, you got two. You got a variance application and a finding application. So I, I will. Um, is there any opposition to, uh, to continuing the the variance hearing? No. Okay. So no, we that's will fine. Uh, continue the variance hearing pending further discussions with per request of Attorney Reedy. Thank you. Um, I think we have to pick a date for that, so we don't have to repost it. Um, you meet with them next week? Yeah, we're meeting them Tuesday. Um, Tuesday the 2nd? Yes. I mean, do, you, do you want to come back the week after that? Do you think you'll have some information after meeting? I would, yeah, I would expect we'd have information. I've got uh, another hearing on the 11th, on a Thursday, if you're looking to do a Thursday. Tuesday's usually better than the library's open. <laughs> <laughs> the library's open until 7 on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, you want to continue it to the 9th? Yeah, we could do that if you start. I've got uh, ConCom, but that's just across the parking lot. at 6, so I could, if you do yours at 7, okay. then we can certainly okay, do so that. So we will uh, okay. reconvene April 9th. Uh, no, I'm just, I, don't, I don't actually have confirmation that we have the room for that day, but we'll put we'll put it on the ninth, and then we could. There's other conference rooms that we could use here. We could find some space to do it. Um, so April 9th, same same uh, at, at the library. Perfect. Seven at seven p.m. Perfect. And then we could always move it again if we have to that day. I could yeah. just come here and open the meeting and move it yeah. to another to continue to another day. So um, April 9th at seven p.m. Yep. Okay. Is that, is that okay for you, Iris? So then we have the find it, the, the request for the finding. Um, how could I? I mean, I don't. I don't have a problem with it either way. Where's the? Where are we considering the? Are you considering this whole stretch, the back setback there? No, it's not. It's fifteen. Is, oh, is it? It's 40, 40 feet is what's required in the industrial. In the industrial, oh. yeah, aquifer protection overlay. Right. So that's the rub. It's at fifteen now, and we're going to twenty. All right, so it is, the side setback's currently 15. You're going to 20? Yes, but not meeting the 40. And we're eliminating the rear setback nonconformity. Um, Okay, so as Attorney Reedy said, when uh, for a fine, for a um, a change of a non-conforming use, uh, we are weighing whether the requested change can be granted without a substantial detriment. Yep. Uh, so we're being asked to make a finding that the um, the extension, alteration, or change of the pre-existing use um, is not substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming use to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, I think, it, in my opinion, clearly matches that. Mm -hmm. Does anyone anyone have any objections to that? No. Okay. So um, I'll make a motion that we make a finding that the um, proposed alteration to the existing non-conforming use satisfies that regulation? Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay, so the finding passes. Thanks a lot. Variance. Lift the fight another day. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Okay, thanks a lot. Aye, thank you.
further business, um, we will uh, conclude the conclude the hearing. Thank you.